Hi, now, we would like to discuss, the problem of end-of-life management, of wastes, from wind turbine blades, and possibilities, for its solution, now, and in future. The year 2020, was in no way a good year for the humankind. However, it was surprisingly positive year, for the development of wind energy around the world. In January 2020, European Parliament, approved the European Green Deal, a set of policy initiatives, by the EC, with the goal to make Europe, climate neutral in 2050. The European Green Deal Investment Plan, were presented in January 2020. One month later, in January 2021, U.S. President Joe Biden, signed an executive order, aiming to double U.S. offshore wind capacity, by 2030. USA also rejoined the Paris Agreement. Further, global wind power growth, must triple over the next decade, to avoid the worst impact of climate change. To some degree, a wind turbine became symbolic, for new, environment-friendly, renewable energy generation. One can see it, as background on TV news, when one reports, about new development, in green industry, or climate protection. In a YouTube clip, showing continuation of Game of Thrones, story in modern times, wind turbines, are seen behind the damaged titan of Bravos, at Westeros. However, even wind turbines, becomes old. Wind turbines, established during the peak time, in early 2000s, approach their end of life now. In 2021, 6,000 wind turbines, face decommissioning. Many parts of wind turbines can be recycled, however, this is seldom the case, for the composite wind blades. A wind turbine blade, of a 5 MW wind turbine, contains 50 tons of thermoset plastic. 43 million tons of blade waste, will be accumulated worldwide by 2050. In newspapers, headlines about the waste problem, of wind turbine blades appeared, again and again. Both wind energy industry, regulators, and governments, seek to find a quick solution, to this problem. The European Union, issued a number of directives, concerning composite waste control, including waste framework directive, hazardous waste directive, incineration directive, landfill directive, and European waste framework directive. These directives define, requirements, toward waste management. Among the available waste management options, landfilling is the least preferential. Energy recovery from wastes, incineration, is considered, a suboptimal options, as well. Recovery, recycling, repurpose of composites are preferable options. Prevention of wastes, is the optimal strategy of waste management. Amount of wastes today, can be reduced, by extending the durability of blades. In this way, the problem of waste, is delayed, until a better solution, can be found. The lifetime of wind turbine blades, can be extended either by preventing blade damage, or by reducing the load on the blade. Here, we show various options, how one can extend, the lifetime, of wind turbine blades. It can be achieved, by using the better, tougher, stronger materials, by reducing the load on the blades, by carrying out maintenance and repair, or reusing, the blades. In order to prevent the blade damage, it is useful to know, the most common damage mechanisms, of wind turbine blades. Most often, leading edge erosion is observed. Then, adhesive layers, are often subject to fatigue damage. Further, small surface, or interface defects, can lead to cracking, and even to fiber failure. These damage mechanisms can be prevented, by using stronger, and tougher coatings, composite matrix, fibers, or sizings. Blade coatings, made from highly damping, energy-absorbing multiple layers, can absorb, and reflect the stress waves, from rain droplet impacts. This can delay, or even prevent, the rain erosion of blades. One can find, more details, on the page of the Duraledge project. Stronger fibers, with specially designed sizings, can also prevent the crack propagation through the laminates of blades. There are also some studies, on the potential of nanoparticle engineered resins, in composites. Load on blades, can be reduced, without changing the blade design, or service conditions. Usually, wind turbine blades are made, from glass fibers, and epoxy resin. If the glass fibers, are replaced, by lighter, and stronger carbon fibers, the blade can be made, lighter, and thinner, and the gravitational load on the blade, is reduced. The idea, to reduce load, works also for blade erosion, the most common, blade degradation mechanism. 
In order to reduce the erosion of blades, Charlotte Hossiger and Jakob Beck from DTU proposed a so called erosion safe mode control. This strategy is based on the reduction in the rotor speed during heavy rain conditions. This allows preventing the most critical erosion load, thus, drastically increasing the blade lifetime. Maintenance of wind turbine blades is the most apparent approach to extend their lifetime. The maintenance can be realized, as corrective, or preventive strategy. The corrective maintenance is initiated, after the damage is noticed, and reported. The preventive maintenance, can be realized as scheduled, regular inspections, or as condition-based maintenance. Condition-based maintenance, requires structural health monitoring, of blades, which can be realized, using various non-destructive testing technologies. After the wind turbine is inspected and damage is identified, repair procedure is started. Degree and type of damage are assessed. Repair scheme is designed. Damaged region is removed, often by grinding. Scarf or shell is attached to the damaged blade. Different repair schemes are applied for different damage mechanisms. For instance, erosion caused damage is repaired by attaching tapes or shells. Structural damage is repaired by scarf attachment. Several projects, devoted to the optimization, of repair technologies, using computational modeling, and microstructural analysis, are running now, at DTU Wind Energy. While the life extension efforts, can delay the end of life of blades, at some stage, the old blade have to be incinerated, or recycled. Different recycling technologies for currently used thermoset composites, have been developed. The recycling methods are classified, into following groups. Primary recycling, or reuse. This means, recycling products for the same use. Secondary recycling, is recycling products for uses, other than their original use. Tertiary recycling, means typically. Recovering petrochemical components of plastics, via a chemical process. Quaternary recycling, is incinerating plastics, to recover energy. The secondary type of recycling, involves mechanical modification of the materials, for instance, shredding, crushing, mechanical separating resin and fibers. The tertiary recycling is carried out by thermal decomposition, pyrolysis, or chemical decomposition, sylvolysis. The Dutch firm, Superuse Studios, proposed using blades, or their parts, in architecture, as bus shelter, city benches, or playgrounds. U.S. company Global Fiberglass Solutions, developed a technology, to break down blades, and press the parts into pellets, and fiber boards, which are used in flooring, and walls. These photo, show the products, made by Global Fiberglass Solutions, from fiberglass wastes, among them eco-poly pellets, eco-poly panels, and roadway applications. In Danish company Refiber Apps, the refiber process was developed, in which the plastic part is gasified, in an anaerobic atmosphere, and then the glass fibers, are recovered. The resulting fibers, have 50% reduced strength, while the stiffness of the fibers is not reduced. The fibers, can be then used, as insulation materials, or as reinforcement. Recycling of wind turbine blades, represent a challenge, for the energy industry now, causing additional costs. At the same time, new wind turbines are built now. How can we, solve this problem, in its roots, preventing reappearance of this problem, in 30 years? This is done by developing, sustainable, recyclable, wind turbine blades. Now, the works are carried out in two directions, recyclable composites, and biocomposites. The first approach to make composites recyclable, involves making the polymer matrix, easy removable, degradable, or even reusable. This allows, also reuse of fibers. This can be done by using thermoplastics matrices, instead of thermosets, or by using recyclable thermosets, instead of common epoxy, or polyesters. The usability of thermoplastics, for wind turbine blades, was studied in several projects, among them, in the Dewind project, of 2 Delft, and in several, currently running projects, with helium liquid thermoplastic resin, developed by French company Arkema. The main challenges of application of thermoplastic composites, in wind blades are, the high temperature processing, lower fiber adhesion, challenge to control the resin flow. Recyclable thermosets, are expected to combine the best of two worlds, recyclability, and high performance of thermosets. 
The thermoset recyclability can be achieved by introducing, degradable or dynamic, covalent bonds in the polymers. And, finally, wood. Wood was used in ancient wind turbines, in Egypt and Persia. Wood is the clearly sustainable material, has high stiffness to density ratio, and high fatigue resistance. Several years ago, DTU managed a project, seeking to develop low-cost, wooden wind turbines in Nepal. The idea was, to carve wind turbine blades, from local sorts of timber. The main challenge is, with wooden blades, are high variability, high weight, and low stiffness, as compared to composites. In China, there were efforts to develop wind turbine blades from bamboo, or bamboo-based veneers. Also, plant-based composites, for applications in wind turbine blades, are tested now. It is of interest, that when comparing, different end-of-life scenarios, of wind turbine blades, repair, and life extension, seems to be most preferential option, with view on CO2 footprint. Over last few years, many new projects, have been started, dealing with recyclable materials, for wind turbine blades, and with recycling technologies. Here, only some of them, are mentioned. Let us make some conclusions. There is a number, of good promising recyclable composite solutions, for the next generation, of wind turbines. They are under development now, and will come on market, in a few years. There are intensive efforts, to develop recycling technology for blades. Extension of blade lifetime, maintenance, and repair, are now most reliable solutions to reduce composite wastes, in short term. Here, you can see some of our publications in this area. Feel free to drop me a line, if you are interested. We are grateful, to Innovation Foundation of Denmark, and Danita Foundation, for their financial support. Thank you very much for your attention.